In fact, to follow up segment tonight, last Thursday we had a debate between radio guy Warren Ballantyne and Fox News analyst Juan Williams. The segment was about Rush Limbaugh losing his NFL bid because of a race controversy. Now, at the end of the segment, I missed something Mr. Ballantyne said. Okay, we won't look at the made-up stuff. Let's, let's look at him playing Barack the Magic Negro on his show. And we're going to say, oh, that's just funny. That's just a joke. That, that, that's, that's not racial either. I mean, the reality you know of it is, it is racial to real hey, black Warren. people. Hey, Warren, you were saying that I was, uh, my argument was a red herring. Maybe you should do some research. Go back and find out that it was an article written by a black person, headline about Barack the but Magic he Negro. Made it out of a song and play, he made it out of a song and played it on his show. So what? He's making fun of it. He, Juan, you know it, 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 it you it's okay. You can go back to the porch, Juan. All right, you guys. can go back. It's Good okay. debate. Good spirited debate. See, now I missed it. You can go back to the porch. I didn't pick it up because I was wrapping the segment up with an eye on promoting the next segment. Now, that's not an excuse. It's just an explanation. I should have picked it up. And had I, I would have scolded Mr. Ballantyne because it's unacceptable. Attacking somebody's ethnicity by using a porch reference is no place on the fact or, or anywhere in America. The question is, why does a smart guy like Warren Ballantyne, who's not going to be on the show anymore because he did it, why does he do this kind of stuff? Joining us from Washington, Fox News analyst Mary Catherine Hamm and the aforementioned Juan Williams. So you were in for me on Friday. I know you deal with it. And I, you know, but the why behind it is fascinating. You know, Ballantyne and you had a spirited debate about the yeah. Limbaugh situation. You both made your points, clearly heard. At the end, he's got to demean you or try to demean you by using that invective. And I, I'm just not getting why he wants to do that. Because I think he, he didn't have a way to respond to the point. He didn't know what he was talking about. He's saying Barack the Magic Negro is somehow a racist. I said, wait a second, that originally came from an article written by a black liberal in the L.A. Times. And then instead of responding, and I don't think he had any response, he wants to marginalize me, as you say, demean me, belittle me, so that people say, oh, you know, that Juan Williams, oh, you know, he's just uh, over there with the conservatives at Fox, and he's, a, you know, he... He's a, you know, oh, I don't even want to get into it, okay? But the idea is to put me down so people will not notice that he doesn't have any way to respond. Instead, focus on somehow that I am not being true. I'm okay. betraying the cause of the race by having an honest discussion. Yes. Now, uh, about a year and a half ago, a guy at Syracuse University who subsequently did not get tenure uh, called you a house Negro. Um, in exactly the same kind of situation because they disagree with your view on a subject. But these guys seem to come by this easily, Juan. You see what I mean? They, they seem to, I know. They, Ballantyne is a guy who didn't really think about it. He just did it. And he made another remark in the same debate about real black people. So yeah. it's obvious that, that they feel comfortable with this kind of stuff. And I just don't get it. Yeah. Well, well go ahead, Mary Catherine. Well, that, that's my issue with it, is the, the fact that he did this so uh, flippantly yeah. and then was so audacious as to brag about it afterwards and then today on his radio show defended his point of view shows how little consequence there is for a, a sanctioned speaker on the left to say these things uh, about minorities. And the fact is that folks on the left with women and uh, I think even more so with minorities, uh, if, you, if you veer from the very left point of view in any way, shape or form, they get very upset, it's very personal, and they feel free to fling these kind of things around. The equal protection is only allowed for very liberal black people and very liberal uh, women because those are the only real women and real black people. And I think that's it's really it's hugely divisive. And the fact that they do it so often is really damaging. Is there any difference between some right wing guys on radio who attack and then no doubt they do personal attacks, nasty, nasty stuff. Mary Catherine, is there any difference between them and what Ballantyne? Well, look, I'm, I'm not a personal ta attacker in general, which I think Juan will attest to. No, I, I've uh, never, you've been on this program for years, you've never made a personal attack ever. And I, I, think, I think the problem with the left on the race issue is that they, they, are, they are at the same time as they're making these racial slurs and being very, very insensitive about it, saying, we are the only ones who really care about minorities. They use it as a cudgel instead of actually okay, helping Okay, but you dodge in my question, Mary Catherine, very nicely, but you dodge it. Is there any difference between what they do and what attacks, some of the right-wing guys do? I think personal attacks are bad, period. <laughs> yeah. But is and there, any, is there any difference in tone, Juan? No. I think and perhaps... You know what, 
Juan, when you ask this question Cut. about why they do it, let me tell you something. I think for a lot of these people, you think of, take a talk about Jesse Jackson, who threatened to castrate Obama for simply saying black men need to be responsible fathers. Or you think about the way they've shunned Bill Cosby for saying, you know what, people need to get up and help themselves. We have a large black middle class in this country. Why don't people pay attention and say we're going to stop crime instead of marching about you know, uh, the differences between sentences for crack cocaine and powder cocaine. Why don't people say don't do cocaine and get the drug dealers out of our communities? When you say that, that means taking responsibility and you're not blaming the man, the white man. Suddenly, the white man is not the focus of everything and Jackson and Sharpton and their ilk are losing leverage if suddenly it's something that the black community has the power to deal with rather than simply point a finger. They say you're airing dirty laundry, Bill. Like you're the problem as opposed to saying, hey, you know what? There's a kid in Chicago being beat to death by other black kids. That's the black community. We can do something about this. All right. Now, the, the problem, you know, I'm disappointed in Warren Ballantyne because I thought, as I said, Mary Catherine, he gave Juan a good debate. It was a good debate. Um, yeah, and, I, and he didn't. We, we didn't need that. The people can listen to the debate. The folks watching the fact or make up their own mind. And, and he, he just throws the grenade well, in and with no remorse, well, as you pointed it out, no remorse. Well, it undercuts his entire argument. It was terribly nasty. It was really disrespectful. Right. And uh, today he's arguing that, oh, well, if Juan took it that way, that's just because Juan's projecting on him. Because I guess, I guess we're supposed to believe that Ballantyne was making some joke about hey, if somebody Juan's said that to Warren Ballantyne, or something. If somebody ridiculous. said that to Warren Ballantyne, it's ridiculous. he wouldn't have been as classy as Juan. Mary Catherine, Juan, thanks very much. Directly ahead, the Obama administration.